Uh, Jared Bernstein, the White House economic advisor, on how that message will go. And, and Jared, it's always good to have you, but the back, backdrop for that are these polls that seem to show most Americans don't agree the economy is doing as well as you say, and some of the numbers do validate. What do you think's going on? I think there's lots of different polls you could pull from. Uh, I, I think the numbers that uh, we think are most important to characterizing uh, this economy from the perspective of working families is how they're doing. Uh, they've got real wage gains up over the past seven months. Uh, 12.1 million jobs since this president got here. A manufacturing boom, 800,000 jobs since uh, Biden took office in manufacturing, rebuilding clean energy, uh, semiconductors, uh, building things in America once again. Anyone who said that can't be done, firmly rejected by this president. A 3.4 percent unemployment the 12, rate, the lowest the in over 50 million, years. You mentioned the 12 million new jobs. When, mm -hmm. in fact, the Department of Labor Statistics says that those are actually added back jobs, the jobs that were taken away during yeah, COVID. Yeah, that's just and the factually wrong. Well, no, let me just pursue it. And, and that the jobs actually created were more like 2.7 million. Um, and and we, the same comes to manufacturing jobs. When you talk about three-quarters of a million more of them added on, a lot of them are just jobs that came back yeah, from so, what we had. Look, them, Neil. Not that your gain is actually smaller than that. A yeah. job gain is a job I, gain. Not I take gonna... nothing away. Hold but do you on, think you inflate the numbers? No. So I'm just not going to let you blow fog over what is clearly a, an absolutely stellar economic record, especially in the labor market. But are those new jobs? Are those new yes. jobs, Jack? <clears throat> yes. All right, but, but they're jobs that we had before that we got three, back post-COVID, right? Hold on. Let me respond, OK? Because sure. that way we can have a much better dialogue. 3.4 percent unemployment. That's the lowest in 53 years. It's lower than uh, expectations were for this time of year based on forecasts that were made by CBO. So that's responsive to your question. We are outperforming where people thought the economy would be. If you look at the long-term job gains over this expansion, we've surpassed our pre-pandemic level way before almost any other business cycle on record, at least going back uh, to the 1950s. Manufacturing is engaged in the strongest business cycle since, uh, I think, 1953. You just don't pose those kinds of economic records unless your economy is doing something very right. And I'm just not going to let you, you know, throw a fog of numbers out here to undermine that. Well, gentlemen, I'm not in the business of throwing a fog, but just Good. getting the numbers. But <laughs> I did want to go into that with you because Janet Yellen on the 517,000 job gain had said there is no recession when you have numbers like that. Do you agree, and is the administration's view that uh, we're not in a recession, not heading to a recession, your view as well, that that is not yeah. a worry at the White House, period? Well, I think the fact is that when you're posting numbers like 3.4 percent unemployment, when you're talking about over half a million jobs in January, when you've had inflation coming down six months in a row and the price of gas about a buck 55 below where it was in its uh, last uh, in its peak last June, well, none gas of is, those the gas are, is moving up again, Jared, as you know. And inflation actually, the last at, few days, six not, and not quite percent right. Percent is not a home run. I mean, it's down so, from what it was. It's still pretty. Okay, high, so right? let's let's take up all those points because some of them, some of them I want to deal with. Um, none of those numbers I just ticked through. I didn't even mention 2.9 percent GDP growth in Q4. None of those numbers is consistent with a recession. 3.4 percent unemployment, not a recessionary number. 517,000 jobs last month, not a recessionary number. Inflation down six months in a row in a year-over-year -year rate. Now, you just raised a good point. 6.5% year-over-year inflation is too high. That's down from over 9% a few months before. But that's the year-over-year -year number. If you look at the monthly number, it actually ticked down a tenth of a percent based on a 9% decline in gas prices in December. Now, you said gas prices have gone up since then. Not quite right. First of all, they've come down the last few days. But more importantly, they're down a buck 55 since their peak well, we go, in uh, June uh, of last year. We can go year. back and forth on gas. Let's say I'll, I'll give you everything you just said. I'm just uh, giving you the uh, facts, uh, Neil. Uh, uh, okay. All right. We pick and choose our times. I'm not here to argue with you. But I, I am here to get it in perspective. 
you, you have to explain, and you did explain very well, some of the real job surges that we've seen. This yeah. half million one last month, that was, that was incredible. There's no excuse or way to dismiss it. The, th you know, the 3.4% unemployment rate back to early Nixon days, remarkable. But do you find it just as remarkable that the American people don't feel the same way? That, that their view is that things are not going well and that your job performance, that is the president's job performance, is not is not a positive for him. They don't think he's doing a good job on the economy. No matter the I mean, numbers you explain or the numbers he explains. What do you what do you think is behind the disconnect? I think you can find different results in different polls. I mean, let me tell you one thing about a partisan result that I've been kind of carrying around in my head. Um, uh, there are more Republicans today who have a negative view on this economy, they'll tell pollsters, than in 1980 when inflation was 14 percent and the unemployment rate was 7 percent. In other words, people were saying, Republicans were saying that the economy is worse now relative to then when inflation was 14 percent and unemployment was 7 percent. That feels to me like a very partisan result. Now, I'm not saying well, every poll. it's reflected poll in a lot has, of polls, right? I mean, it was an well, AP some, general poll of all, all voters out there. Only one in five thought the president deserved another shot at office. So what did I, you think I of think. That? So I think that the way to, from an, from an economist's perspective, what we're trying to do is build the strongest economy on behalf of American working people. Build this economy from the bottom up and the middle out. That's what the president said he'd do when he got here with shots and arms and checks, checks and pockets from the rescue plan, setting up this amazing labor market recovery that you and I have been talking about. Now, as an economist, the best thing I can do is keep my head down and build on those successes because they're so important for working Americans. And that's what we're doing. You'll hear tonight, the president is not talking about sitting on his hands and looking backwards at all these great successes I've just been taking off to you. He's talking about continuing to implement the bipartisan infrastructure plan, the Inflation Reduction Act, standing up a clean energy electric battery sector, standing up semiconductor production in this country, reinvesting, finally reinvesting in our public goods that have suffered decades of disinvestment. That's the only way we know how to move forward in meeting the needs of the right. American working class, and we're going to continue to do so. Okay, we got through that fog just 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 nicely. Jared Bernstein, thank you very <laughs> thank very you, much. Neil. Always good seeing good you. you. Uh, top economic advisor to the president of the United States, Jared Bernstein. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.